Tom and I have spoken at, you know, we've had so many Sunday lunches, sat with my father, um, listening to, I mean, he was never bravado about it. He, he loved the National. I mean, he, he said, he used to say, you know, and he, he never thought he'd, the season was complete unless he'd jumped at, at least one circuit around the Grand National. And, and we've, we've discussed every horse he rode, every, you know, how to ride the first, how to ride. Beaches was different in that, that those days. There used to be a path across the, 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 the four beaches. <coughs> beaches had that drop. And uh, he used to say to us, you know, squeeze going to the, when you get over the pass, squeeze the horse. So, so they would jump out over the, um, the drop. And then you, you know, tell us all about the line that canal turn and how to ride across the, the over Valentine's and respect Valentine's, which is second along the, the back there. And then how to take your line from the last to the winning post. So we, we, we knew what we would grow up on all the stories. I never won a national, um, and, and now here's Tom has a, another opportunity. He's won 18 nationals, hasn't he? Um, but he's a professional jockey, first of all. You know, the national is a very, very important. It's the highest profile race within our sport. Whereas Cheltenham is magnificent and goes to the, you know, a wide racing audience. Where the Grand National goes to to a bigger audience. People have watch one race a year or perhaps two the Derby and the Grand National so this 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 is a much wider audience and it and I think it is a pinnacle of somebody's career but as I say he is a professional jockey so the most important he has to get there it's not just about riding uh, one winner you know he, he you know I, I remember try to put it in another way I remember Cliff Morgan when he used to do these wonderful things on BBC and do the um, interviews of ex-sportsmen and he, he said, you know, we were talking about, he said to me, would you come back for what's just one ride? And, uh, and I said, I said, well, would you go back to Wales, you know, just to score one ride for the winning? He said, no, that's not what it's about. That, you know, the, 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 what it's about is playing in the cup match and, and fighting it out, proving that you've good enough to get in the team. It's not just about that moment of glory. And for Thomas, it's not just about this one moment. He's a professional jockey. Um, if it comes off, fantastic, it'll be the pinnacle of his career, especially riding, you know, for John Joe O'Neill, who's a racing hero, for Trevor Hemmings, who's a national hunt racing hero, who's won two or three nationals. So there's a very romantic story about it, which the Grand National needs and always see, you know, when party politics won, there was an election, when, you know, there's, a, there's a story about every, every, every one, and this would be cloth cap, because Trevor wears a cloth cap. So, but, you know, we mustn't take yourself out of the norm. He's a professional jockey. He has to ride all the way up there, and next day he'll have to go off somewhere and ride. But it, it, it is a great privilege for him and a great privilege for the family, and extraordinary that, you know, well, it's extraordinary, we're so stupid that we couldn't do anything else. We had to send another son out to ride, ride in the Grand National. I think other, other racing families uh, have gone on to be good bloodstock agents and write write racing books like Dick Francis's son and uh, you know so um, the Scudamores are stuck in a in a sort of time warp and too stupid to go in there else but ride horses. You we went to school and uh, with people who'd never heard of didn't know anything about racing but they have heard about the Grand National so um, I remember somebody saying to me I can't understand why you would want to be a jockey there's no glory in being a jockey be a racing car driver or do something like that whereas uh, you know, they did, they had heard of the, the Grand National. So yes, I, I always wanted to do it. And you know, it was a special, uh, um, before I went up to it, I remember, you know, sat down in the, you know, we had our own little room, used to sit down and watch the television. And, you know, I can remember seeing the year when they all fell, because my father had a very bad fall and it was the first year he didn't ride. 66, I think, when John Buckingham won the Grand National and they all fell. and. And then uh, really from then, the Grand National got into my psyche. And then um, dad trained horses and we gradually had, took horses up there. I can remember, the, you know, remember we had a horse called Spitting Image who led in the Grand National. And, uh, you know, so it was really wanted to do it. And then we had a horse called Charles Dickens, who was uh, third to Red Rum. You know, I remember, you know, and when you're in the other camp, 
you in the Charles Dickens camp, you can only see the weakness in Red Rum and he hadn't won for a bit, or you know, you know, the Gingers in his unique way. You thought you'd beat him, and then um, you know, then you, you look back now and you see what a brilliant horse. I mean, quite extraordinary horse. Red Rum was to do it. It gets me emotional three times, you know, um, and so. You know, it was a little bit like me. I remember when I used to take Savin Law on Desert Orchid. I, at the time you're in it, you can only, you didn't really like Desert Orchid, you want to beat him, you know. But now when you look back, you see what a fantastic horse Red Rum. And, and you know, he, he, he incited my um, love of the national. And, you know, he kept the national alive at a time when uh, the finances to keep the course going were, were struggling, you know. I can only equate it to in cricket in terms or tennis terms that you know sometimes you can be you can be out of sorts and somebody's serving a ball at you and you can't see it or you can be playing cricket against a fast bowler and uh, suddenly you know you're in rhythm you see it that you know you know he's a great bowler but you you're in a great position yourself and the, the ball looks big and it looks slow if you're on the right horse at Aintree because the fences are big it pushes them back on the hocks it, it so much sport is about rhythm and you can get into rhythm and, and honestly sometimes you go around and you feel that you're never going to fall you know I never won it but every time you jump round you felt yeah I must have something about me you know it, 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 it was a big course to jump round in those days still is and sometimes you <laughs> then you would go on to another course you know Plumpton on the Monday and turn A over T at the the, the first fence and you think you know <laughs> bring you back down to earth and think you know um, and why was it so easy around the Grand National? And, but it's the speed of some of the, the lesser tracks when you're, you're pushing, whereas the Grand National, you tend to get into the rhythm. And you, I think you have such respect for the fences. So although people talk about the welfare of it, I think a lot of time, you know, we do find that horses, that you run them over the right, the stairs, you run them over the distances, they come back from the races better, you know, they, 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 rather than struggling over the shorter distances. That's if you're riding a great national horse, you know. I think years ago, um, when it was the big offences, they, they had to go slightly slower. They had to back off them and write them with a bit more respect. You know, I, I see what the old boys talk about. I did a book with, with Chris Cook and getting quotes from the old jockeys who went round. And he said, you know, we I talked about rhythm and style and stuff. He said we didn't talk about rhythm and style. We talked about jumping the next fence because you know the slightest mistake, and um, they were over and you know you go back if you can ever see the video of Oxo jumping um, the Grand National I mean he got a length he won because he jumped better than others he got he was a huge horse and he got length after length jumping you know I was at 36 fences around the National aren't they? you know he must have gained 72 lengths in jumping alone you know there's two parts for me there's, the, there's daddy who's watching his son playing football on the touchline and there's the father a professional jockey of a professional jockey so I have to, to push down the, the father on the touchline and try and keep my feet on the ground as a, as, as, as a former professional watching his son who just happens to have a son that rides on the national.